Alright y'all, you know what time it is. You know I couldn't let you have a drama free weekend. It's your favorite private investigator, Ashley Wardlow, and I'm coming to you, bringing you all the facts. Hey y'all, so today the purpose of this video is to address a question that I've gotten from a few people regarding a con artist. So. With my situation, I refer to my ex as a con artist quite often. And I know some people are like, OK, why is he a con artist and not just a cheating boyfriend who got caught? So I thought I would address that today and kind of go over the terms on what a con artist is and pretty much, you know, kind of get it to the point where you guys can recognize a con artist if someone comes to you. And they are exhibiting certain types of behavior and you can be like, OK, let me run. <laughs> so um, first things first, I think it would be good to start out with the definition of a con artist. So I love Google. I'm going to go ahead and hop on to Google and show you guys my screen. Let's see what Google says a con artist is. Let me see. So what makes someone a con artist? According to Google, well, actually, according to Brainstorm, that's on Google, they said they have an inflated view of themselves and they're really shameless in their self-promotion. They can also be impulsive. They engage in dangerous behavior and obviously commit crimes without any regard for the impact it can have on others. Con artists also tend to be very confident and cocky. OK, so if y'all dating somebody and they display some type of behaviors that I just read, then you definitely want to think about them twice uh, because the next things that's going to come with dating this person is going to be just a bunch of back and forth on and off. And, and it could get dangerous. It really could. So. Uh, if you're dating somebody and they display some behaviors like I just read, then, you know, think twice about it. Uh, sometimes you can get people help, but sometimes you can't. So my recommendation is to step away from anybody that that displays behaviors like this. And that could be a con artist. Uh, one thing. Let me see if they mentioned it. Uh, impact. I tend to be cocky. OK, so the biggest thing that they forgot to mention is that. <laughs> They some liars. OK, con artists are liars. <laughs> so what made my ex a con artist versus uh, a cheating boyfriend? Of course, you guys heard about um, him basically inducing me and having me marry him in order for him to stay over here in the United States. That's the whole reason that he was with me. The main reason why he, you know, pretended to be in love with me, shook hands with my family, left, partied, had had a good time with my family, smiled in everybody's face, knowing that his plan was to actually marry me, have me fill out immigration paperwork for him to stay here and then divorce me and leave and go to New York with the other woman that he had a baby with that I had no idea. So. It's a lot of stuff within that story alone, but he definitely conned his way over into the United States. Um, this isn't something that I'm just making up. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see the evidence that I present. And I'm going to continue to present that type of evidence because I don't make up stuff and I'm not a liar. So I, I will present evidence. I will continue to do that to back up what I'm talking about, because what he's doing right now, he's going around and he's telling people, Oh, Ashley told one bag of lies on me. Oh, it's not true. Oh, you have to believe me. That's what he's doing now. And he's trying to get money from people. He's like, I'm going to appeal this process. And it's like, look, you conned your way over here. We have evidence that's undeniable. 
go on somewhere. Okay. Leave me alone. Stop calling, stop texting, you know, stop conning people. But I'll promise you right now, he's with this young lady over in New York, but I guarantee you he's continuing to buy prostitutes and make up reasons why he don't have money. And he's also continuing to date other people. He's a con artist. And while he's dating these other people, he's getting money from them and saying, you know, I, I barely have food. I don't have any any place to stay. You know, I'm going to show you guys all of this. OK, um, for example, let me show you one lie that he did. And this was actually like some police stuff that was involved. So I'm going to go to his TikTok page. OK, now, mind you, this is his page. This is not my page. Uh, I have nothing to do with his TikTok page. OK, so I found out that he had a TikTok page basically because I was on my TikTok for me and my daughter. And I saw an option to, like, see who's viewing your profile. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, OK, it would be nice to, to know. And the first thing that comes up is a name Jordan da Dave or Jordan Davi. I don't know what he was trying to spell. But um, it says Jordan, D-A-V-E, and then the number two. And so um, I've seen that money picture before on his Instagram or, or something he had. I think it was Instagram. He had that picture. So I knew it was him. And let me tell you also how I knew it was this liar. OK, so I'm going to click on this this um, video that he posted. It looks like he posted it. In November of 2021. Okay, so November 25th, 2021. Mind you, he left from my house on October 13th, 2021. That was the night where he assaulted me. Uh, he ran out and I found out from that cell phone that he was actually trying to marry me and divorce me and had a baby on the way and was dealing with other women. Like I found a lot that night. Okay, so it looks like a couple days later, he goes on to TikTok and he posts this. Wish me could have tell us I'm perfect, but I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to stop being petty. All right. So at I'm this point. <laughs> Wish me could have tell us I'm perfect, but I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Every time I hear that, I got to dance. All right. So I muted the music, uh, but I needed y'all to hear the music because he put like a little he put some some music behind his little post that he made. So this is what the post reads. I know you can see it, but I'm going to read it to you. All right. I'm going to read it as if I'm him. The person that I had closest to me tried to have me killed. Couldn't kill me. And now trying to bring me down to the lowest. They can, I can. See, I'm just, I'm, 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 I keep telling them to make these words. Just move, move the camera closer, man. God, I can't see. Just move it closer and I can, I can work it out. Just come on, come closer. Come, come on so I can see, so we can hurry up. Come on, a little closer. Just come on. I got to see. Okay, I think, okay, there we go. This is great. All right, this man's music is responsible for a lot of love making. He's a very good. Okay, let me start that over. Hold on. See, I need this music in here for this effect. Wish look with that is not perfect. All right, so I'm gonna turn the music down, but I'm gonna read it to y'all as if I'm him. Um. <clears throat> the person that I had closest to me tried to have me killed couldn't kill me and now trying to bring me down to the lowest they can I never think stuff like those could happen to me but I'm still alive God strayed away the gunshots that was meant to take my life I'll rise through all the negativity I'm thankful for life and I'm thankful for my blessings on God <laughs> that we put on God real life prayer hands okay um I'm gonna turn this music down I like this song so shout out to Mavado um <laughs> okay y'all so get ready for me to prove to you how much this person is a liar okay um I just had to read it like that because I know he's telling his story, honey. He is going around and, you know, telling people he was chased. And he so this is the story. 
that he told the judge at court. And mind you, while he's talking, everybody's looking like, what kind of country Western film is this fool trying to explain? Like, it was weird. So he says that, I think my, I think he says my father put him in the chokehold. That's what he said, chokehold. Um, he says that my brother came over to the house where we live with his friend. My brother had a gun on his waist and his friend pulled that gun on him. He also said, now this is in court. He also said that I got into a car or I got into someone else's car. I can't really remember. I'll get the transcript. Okay. But he says that I got into a car and I tried to run him over and he's like, yeah, there's a camera right in front of their house. And I, I felt safe in front of the camera. So he's telling the story. OK, like he's going to give the next screenwriter a run for their money because he is telling a story. OK, so he's like, yeah, they chased me and they and I was jumping through yards and I was flying and da, da. <laughs> he was telling the story. OK, and we all just like. Get them crickets day moments. OK. <clears throat> So, <laughs> so he tells that story to the judge. Now, what the next thing I'm going to bring up for y'all to see now you have this. I'm going to take a screenshot so I can do it side by side. But you have this TikTok post right here. Right. And he says that, you know, someone shot at him. Um, <laughs> God saved his life. You know, the bullets and the gun, whatever, whatever he's trying to say. Um, so let me. Go to the next document. Now, y'all going to be in for something on this, okay? Okay, so this is the next document that I want to show y'all. So this is a, a fabricated, okay, super fake <laughs> order of protection that he went and filed like maybe a day or two after he left. And what he was pretty much trying to say is that, you know, the story that he told in court, but he got some discrepancies, okay? so. As you can see, uh, Ken Troy Richards, the petitioner, okay, he went to the police and filed the order of protection against me. And I believe he also put some of my family members in it. So let me scroll down to what he wrote when he went and filed this petition, okay? Let's see. Where is it? Oh, here it is, okay. All right, so this is the page where he went and wrote you know his story okay and let me read read the story to you guys i fell he fell afraid okay uh he fell afraid because i've received numerous threats to my life and well-being by my new wife ashley but on october 13th 2021, as I was trying to leave the house to avoid a escalation of violence, she called her father and brother to attack me and take away my passport, which they did. Her brother proceed to call another guy who pulled gun, who pulled a gun at me. I started running for my life. They all got in their cars and chased me <laughs> uh, around the community. Ashley got in. Wait, Ashley got up to me in her car and tried to run me over. I got to a safe location and called police. OK, so it's a few things in here that I want to point out to you guys. But um, the first thing is. <sighs> This is not what he just posted in his TikTok. OK. Remember, he posted that there were some gunshots. Now, mind you, all of this is fake. But if this was real and there were some gunshots in my in my place where I live, the police would have been here like that. People would have been under arrest. They would have been checking for gunshot residue. Uh, they would have been checking everything because they don't play that over here. So um that's number one okay i'm gonna do this side by side to show y'all that this person saying you know here's one story and then he goes on to tiktok and say that he was being shot at so why didn't you come to court and say hey they pulled guns and they shot at me okay and on top of that 
in your police report, why didn't you say you were shot at? Like, that's a, a major thing to miss if somebody pulled a gun on you and pulled the trigger. Like, that's something really important to mention. Let me tell you why. Because it never happened. OK, he made this post because he wanted to get sympathy from people. OK, he's the type of person to lie and say, hey, I need money for this or I need money for that. Can you help me? Um, so he will 100 percent lie to you and say whatever he needs to say in order for you to give him some money. So this was one of the things that I thought was really funny. You know, you didn't want to made this video with this song behind it, you know, and you're like, yes, I made it. Thank God for my life. They shot at me. But God said, and no, that's not what happened. So the fact and the fact that you can even include God in this lie, like it is just mind blowing. So um, that's one reason why he's a con artist. OK, he's lied about what happened that night. He know that never happened. And he's going on. He's going with that story. And I'm pretty sure there are several people that he's told that story to in order to get some money. OK, um, the passport. OK, so in here you see he says that. Uh, who took it? Called her father, brother to attack me. OK, so he says that his passport was taken. Right. Now, I want to show you guys something called an interrogatory. And what that was, um, my attorneys recommended it. And it's pretty much like <sighs> you're under oath while answering questions, even though it's on paper, you're still under oath. So we ask these questions before we go to the hearing in order to establish, you know, something on paper, something under oath. This is what he said. And when we go to court, if there's anything different, then we can say no. But you said X, Y and Z on this paper. So let me pull up the interrogatory answers. Now, it took a long time for him to answer because we were asking him straight up questions like, did you have a child with another woman? Who else did you speak to regarding Mary and Ashley for papers? Where do you live? You know, we asked him all these questions and wanted to see what he would say. So now, mind you, here, take take note of this right here where he says his passport was taken away. And mind you, he says this was October 13th, 2021. So keep this in mind. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the interrogatory. I got the document pulled up um, again. This is the interrogatory. This is what we sent to his attorneys when he had attorneys before they dropped him because he's a liar. OK, um, we sent this out and we act like I said, we asked a series of questions, you know, state your name, state the full name and addresses, phone numbers, date of birth um, of the people that you lived with within the past five years. Um, so pretty much we wanted him to tell us who have you been staying with since you've been in the United States? OK, he, he gave us some crazy answers and I'm going to show y'all. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all. Exactly why this person is a con artist and, and low key stupid. OK, um, so again, this is an interrogatory. Now, let me jump down to question 13. Now, this is some, one of the questions that I came up with because I knew he was going to lie and he was going to be stupid. Here we ask him, state the dates on which you traveled using your passport over the past five years. OK, he goes and gives us answers to these questions that we ask. Now, I'm going to scroll down and show you what he says for this. Question 13, he answers that he used his passport on June 17th, 2021 to go from Monte Montego Bay to Midway Airport in Chicago. First off, you came on June 19th, OK? He clearly don't remember much, but that's that's the wrong date. But he was close. OK, he came here June 19th, 2021. Now, here's the big thing. October 14th, 2021, he says that he left from O'Hare and went to New York. Now, if you remember in this order of protection, he says on October 13th, his passport was taken. OK, that's what he says. So we went and asked him. State the dates on which you traveled using your passport over the last five years. And again, here he goes and says on October 14th. He used it to go from Chicago to New York. So there's one lie right there. OK, there it is on paper for you guys to see 
that this con artist is is lying. He never had his passport taken. He was never chased down, hunted down, uh, <laughs> hunted down. That's the word he used. Um, none of that never happened. So he you he had his passport. He left out of here and went to New York to be with the woman that he got pregnant. OK, he did not get beat up or chased down or hunted down. And we did not take his passport. So there you have it. I'll put these side by side really quickly so you can see the questions, the answers, and the police report. Okay, so something else that I want to point out here. Uh, you're going to see, where is it? Question. Okay, so we asked him on number four, tell us who all your baby mamas is, okay? Let us know the name of them, where they live, their phone number, whatever. He comes in and let me go up to number four for him. He lists a woman that's in Jamaica who he does have a child with and he lists me and spell my name wrong, but he lists me. And I'm like, okay, you clearly forgot the new woman, uh, Miss Williams, that you just had a baby with. And I guess what you're not claiming a baby. So what he said in court was that <clears throat> because the girl wasn't sure who the father of her child was, he thought that the baby should have a father. So he stepped in and he's not sure if it's his baby. And I'm like, boy, stop lying for Christ's sake. You, that's your child. I have the Amazon purchases of you trying to buy clothes for the baby and the payment was declined. Um, I have her baby registry. I have your text messages with you. You're talking to her, telling her, are you going to give my son my last name? So um, I, I don't I don't know why he thought. I, I just don't know, y'all, like why he thought he could do this type of stuff with me being on the end that I'm I'm on. I just don't know. But he tried it and it failed. So moving on. Let me show you another reason why he's a con artist and not just a cheating boyfriend. So here is another question. I think I mentioned it already, but we asked him to state the, the addresses of where you've lived for the past five years. Now, let me tell you all how crazy this person is. OK, here's the answers that he gave to that question. OK, let me go to him for you guys because I can do that. OK, so here he lists a, a series of addresses. Clearly, I blurred out some of them. But the one that I wanted to really point out to you guys is here. 4740 Roosevelt Road. OK, mind you, this is a document from him. It came from him. And it's under oath. OK, so. Speaking of under oath real quick, when we was in court, y'all, and the judge says, put y'all right hands up. He gonna swear us in. This idiot does this, and the judge is like, "No, your other right." <laughs> so, the other right, your other right. <laughs> uh, I thought that was like, "Oh, here we go." But anyway, um, that's the address: forty-seven forty Roosevelt Road. Now, take note of that address because I'm about to blow your mind. Ooh. <laughs> Let me get to those text messages. Those famous. Text messages, y'all. OK, so the address is there. Forty seven forty Roosevelt Road. Let me see what happens when I go to the text messages that we subpoenaed from him. And let's see if that address is in the text messages. OK, let's see. All right. Let's type. Let's do a control F. We're going to find it. Forty seven forty. And then I'm going to go with R. I'm just type in R. Oh. Oh, wow. There it is. <laughs> There's the address. OK, um, this is a set of text messages from one of the prostitutes. OK, as you can see, it starts out saying, hey, what's up? Um, do you want to meet? I seen your ad. I'm interested. Uh, I'm doing in calls. Uh, I'm located in Westchester. Some people get that that city mixed up with the one that's right over next to it. But it's the same address. OK, um, he says, oh, what do you charge? A uh, hundred. 
for QV 140 for half half hour. Mind you, again, I'm learning this from the internet, okay? I had to Google this stuff. I'm like, what is this? So there's the address, people. He listed one of the addresses where he met the prostitute on his interrogatory. So now he's under oath saying, yes, I did live or go to this address where the prostitute was at. This is the address that she gave. So, um, yeah, I, that that's crazy right there. You just told on yourself that you were definitely purchasing the pretty women. Um, <laughs> uh, let's move on. Okay. Uh, yeah, y'all can see these text messages. Really, really in debt. Okay, look at this. Which room are you in? Now, let's jump into something else that I wanted to point out. This is what makes him a con artist as well. Okay. On this order of protection that he filed, he checks off this box that says petitioner should be granted exclusive possession of the residence. The special venue rules, blah, blah, blah. Petitioner has a right to occupancy. And respondent has no right to occupancy. I just want to karate chop and do everything that I need to do to stop this madness. Okay. First off, he does not own any rights to the home. Okay. This is my mother's home. Okay. We came from Jamaica to my mom's house while I was in the midst of getting my own building which I do have shortly after he left, I obtained. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys about the glow up and everything after, after this, uh, maybe in another video, because there is a, a bright side to all this craziness that I done went through. But anyway, this is my mom's home. You do not have any rights to this home. So why would you go and file this fabricated order of protection and then tell us y'all got to leave so I can come with my prostitutes? Like, <laughs> That's pretty much what the plan was. I can guarantee you if if there was a world where the police came to us and said, you guys need to go. This guy is in fear of his life. Um, you need to find somewhere else to stay because he's going to live here. I guarantee you this would have turned into all type of hustle and flows and, and any pretty woman. This would have turned into that, honey, because that's what he was doing. OK, I guess he wanted us to get out so he can secure a place for for his women. And uh, gonna kick my baby out. I mean, my God, what about the baby? Like, <laughs> you gonna kick my daughter out too? Like, come on now. So that's another reason why he's a con artist. You not only went and filed this fake order protection, but you tried to kick us out of our home and take it. On top of the money that you didn't got away with taking. Like, this is crazy, but he's a con artist. Let me move on. So that's that's I just wanted to point out a few reasons why he's a con artist as opposed to uh, a cheating boyfriend. There is a picture that surfaced. Let me see if I can find it for you guys. I'm pretty sure I can um, where he claims that he was being. Oh, there it is. I got it. I'm gonna send it to y'all. Uh, let's see. So he claims that. A uh, bounty was put on his head. OK, so let me go to this picture so that I can show you guys. OK, so y'all seen the movie. Uh, let's pick Wild Wild West. It's super old. You know, it's a country western movie, western movie, whatever you want to call it. They was out there, you know, dueling and saying, you know, don't move. And it will. I think Will Smith was in it. And I forgot who else. I haven't seen it in a long time. But anyway, y'all know they had the cowboy boots and, and the hats on and they was doing their thing. OK. I feel like the picture I'm about to show y'all is one of those wanted signs that used to hang up back in the day. And <laughs> it'd be all beat up and crumbled up around the side. The picture I'm about to show you is something that I feel like Jordan made this picture, sent it to multiple women and said, hey, there's a bounty on my head. Can you guys please send me money so that I can get away? <laughs> so this is picture that uh, he submitted for evidence and said there was a $10,000 bounty on his head. Dead only. OK, hit up for location. Um, apparently he told his lawyers that 
I made this picture and that I put a bounty on his head and um, <laughs> wanted dead or alive, you know. <laughs> this is definitely the work of a con artist. They will take it there. They will go to the extent to make whatever they need to make in order to get money from somebody or to get sympathy from somebody because they're always looking for that. They want somebody to feel bad for them so that they can drag you in more and more and suck you dry for everything that you have. So this is the country Western <laughs> flyer that apparently was going around uh, because there was a bounty on his head. Uh, dead only hit up for location. <laughs> There's some mess, some more BS. Okay. So uh, let's jump over. Uh, let me take this picture down because it's annoying to even look at. Okay, so before I close, again, I just wanted to reiterate what a con artist was and what it's, what it's listed as. Let me go, actually, let me go here. And let's go back to... Okay, y'all, so I'm wrapping it up, but before I finish, I just wanted to go over really quickly a con artist and what to watch out for. So I have this up for you guys to look at, but just going off the top of my head, a con artist is somebody that's going to lie to you. They're going to sometimes lie to you and make you feel good, lie to you and make you feel bad. Whatever the case, they're going to lie to you. And trust me, while they're lying to you, they're lying to several other people as well. Um, a con artist is a narcissist. That's a very common trait to look for when you meet somebody that's a con artist. Let me switch over to what that definition is, according to the Mayo Clinic. Um, they said that a narcissistic personality disorder is a mental health condition in which people have an unreasonably high sense of their own importance. They need and seek too much attention and want people to admire them. People with this disorder may lack the ability to understand or care about the feelings of others. So after you guys learned about my story, of course, you can see why this definitely fits uh, Jordan. He's a narcissistic person. One thousand percent. OK, um, he does not care about anybody but himself. He wants to he wants to be something that he's not. So in my mind, I thought he was going to come here. Uh, he was going to, you know, be a family man, get it, get a job, help me take care of the baby because it was always all all on me. It was always all on me. So I thought he would come here and, you know, all you had to do was do right. I mean, it, it's really not that difficult to understand that, you know, you met a beautiful woman. You guys have a beautiful child who's healthy. Um, you, you have an opportunity to go into another country and make money, you know, become an established man, you know, take care of your family. People would have admired that person as opposed to this creep who was out here buying all the prostitutes, not helping with the child, taking the money and buying the prostitutes as opposed to buying diapers and, and freaking wipes, you know, things that I did ask for, um, he, he didn't help with. So people would have admired that type of man, but you, you really have to understand that this is a, a creep. This is a con artist. This is a narcissistic person, um, who I ended up dealing with. And I say this often to people who know me, but my child was the best thing out of this situation. And I'm so happy that right now, even at two years old, she has a lot of mommy's personality and mommy's traits. She's very, very smart and funny. So <laughs> I'm hoping that she grows up into a little mini me or better because the person that he is, is, is some, something that's sickening and I'll end on saying this. The urge that he had to, you know, get these prostitutes, sleep with multiple women, sleep with multiple prostitutes, you know, make these lies up, have different women for different reasons. He had that urge since he was about 13 or 14. Clearly, he was raised to 
run around in the streets. You go to clubs, go to parties at a very young age and use sex as a way to get things from women or use um, lies or conning techniques to get things from women at a very early age. I can speak on it because I did see things when I lived in Jamaica. I'll make a different video on what to expect when you're dating someone from overseas, because I saw things that I can warn you guys about and have you, you know, just be cautious when you're going out there. And some of the lies that you, you might be told, uh, for example, one of them, uh, I'll mention this in the next video, but one of them is the guys who have their hair tied up. They're about to go to sleep. They're on FaceTime with you and they're saying, baby, I love you. Good night. I'm so tired. Okay. Talk to you tomorrow. And when they get up, they are fully dressed. They take that rag off their head and they hit the club. So you thinking he at home sleeping, but he's out there conning somebody else, getting, uh, you know, into someone else's hotel to sleep with them. And the next morning call you and say, hey, baby, I love you. How did you sleep? OK, I've seen this with my own eyes several times from different men. So um, be on the lookout for that video. But, you know, there's serial killers out there who kill people and then they stop. OK, they go out, they may rape and then kill or they might just kill people, but they stop. Then they go on to get a family, have, a, you know, kids and a wife and a job, a normal job. And you think, oh, wow, this is a nice, wholeheartedly good person. This is a humble man. Wow. Look at him. But they start back killing. And on the police end, they're like, man, these murders stopped for a while and then started back up. Like what happened? And a lot of times when murders just stop, the police might say, OK, this person died um, that's the main thing, you know, this person died because they rarely just stop. But in a lot of cases, these serial killers, they stop, but it's the urge that they have within them to get back out there and do it again. They cannot help it. And that's what I want you guys to see in my case, where you had this guy who was clearly out there, you know, doing multiple things with multiple women, including prostitutes. And then he stops for a little while. Because he can't do it. And the moment he touched United States soil, he started back up again. Let me get the prostitutes. Let me get multiple women. Let me con people. It doesn't matter if Ken Troy Richards hit the lottery for a million dollars. I can guarantee you he will spend that money and then go and ask another woman. Can you help me, please? I don't have food to eat. I don't have I don't have anything. I don't have this and I don't have that. Um I'm going to go through some text messages with you guys that I received right after the hearing. This is right after the hearing from from Ken Troy Richards. OK, but one of them that I'll point out is a text message where he says, let me see, let me find his number because he'll he'll use multiple numbers as well. Let me go and find his number. OK, so he texts from one of his fake numbers and I pretty much asked him, why haven't he sent any money for his daughter? OK, you'll see these messages in my pilot episode for Catching a Con Artist. OK, but for now, I just wanted to tell you another thing. And this is the last thing for this for this segment. OK, I asked him why he didn't send money for his daughter. Not one dollar. He says that he's been living in the streets and <laughs> sleeping on the streets. He barely has money or food to eat. You know, he gave me this whole spiel. Okay. So the exact message goes, I didn't send any money because one, I don't know where to send you the money to. Every time I try to reach out, you just try to save it so you could use it against me. Okay. So he's referring to when he would call or text maybe twice out of those times, he would say, How's the baby doing? Or uh, can I send her a tablet or some weird stuff? Mind you, she has a tablet already and he knows that. He was really just reaching out because he's, he was doing that for his lawyers at the time when he had some and trying to fake like he cared about this baby. He says he don't know where to send the money to. And I'm like, well, you sure knew where to send all them prostitutes the money. Cash app. 
So go ahead. And he knows my cash app name. He knows my number. He had multiple ways to send money for this child. He just didn't want to because he wanted to send it to the prostitutes. OK, so I'll continue. Um, I'm not working. I barely get by. I've been sleeping outside. I only get a little money when I do something like clean a yard or a basement for someone. OK, first off, he's lying. So if there's anybody that's over in the Bronx, New York area and you see this person floating around and working, let me know where he's working at. I will find out. But in the meantime, he's claiming he's doing little side jobs and he's barely eating and sleeping. You live at the house with the girl. <laughs> so how are you sleeping outside? You reside at the house in the Bronx with a young lady. So I don't th this is him trying to get some sympathy and, and, you know, get somebody to feel sorry for him. Oh, no, he's sleeping outside. I could care less where you sleep. Do you need a sleeping bag? Because I could care less where you sleeping. If it's outside on the ocean, uh, underneath a park bench, that's not my concern. You didn't give anything to my child at all. And I'm I'm assuming he's probably walking around lying and saying, oh, yeah, I helped like take care of my kids. Yet you are still out here trying to get somebody else pregnant. I don't understand. I really don't understand it. So um, that's all I have for you today. Be careful. Watch out for these con artists. If you would like to be featured in an episode of my docuseries called Catching a Con Artist, please message me, um, inbox me, go to my website. You can email me at ashley at wardlowconsulting.com. Um, there's a number of ways you can reach me. You can message me on Instagram, catching a con artist. All of that information will be in the description below. So if you know somebody or if you yourself feel like, you know, you would be a good fit to be on, on the, the docu-series, then let me know and I can arrange so that we can get that filmed and I can start getting these episodes out. Take care, you guys.